Today, you can often see tourist groups exploring Sofia or other cities to get to know their sites. However, can we also look as tourists to our recent past? Let's look not for what is there, but what is no longer there. Non-existent buildings and symbols from the end of communism. Let's go back to the events that led to the end of communism to understand the consequences for today. On November the 9th, 1989, the Berlin Wall, a symbol of the Cold War and the division between East and West, fell. On November the 10th, 1989, communism ended in Bulgaria as well, and the difficult path to democracy and the rule of law began. Everything culminates in this hall, where on November the 10th, 1989, the disbelieving Todor Zhivkov realized that his rule was over. Here, the Communist Party carried out a coup through which it hoped to retain its power. Today, this hall is located in the National History Museum, and it's as if the hall has been frozen in that moment. From here, we begin our walk, which will take us back to the more important events and places related to the end of communism in Bulgaria. Our guides will be public figures, contemporaries and eyewitnesses of the events, who will tell us how they return to these moments. Was it just a palace coup or a personal revolution that changed their lives? The first and second episodes of our series showed the image of the communist regime in Bulgaria and the emergence of the resistance movement. Today, in the third episode, we will focus on the first weeks after the end of the regime. Through the skepticism and optimism of these days, our guide will be Filip Dimitrov. He tells us how the slogan, down with the Communist Party, appeared and how, spontaneously but inevitably, discontent turned into political action. Today, we're making a sort of a time travel. We're imagining that we're tourists in time and we're going back 30 years in time, so plus minus 30 years, the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s. For my generation, and hopefully for other generations of Bulgaria, but not only, you are the first democratically elected prime minister. So it will be interesting to hear more about your biography. And why are we exactly where we are? Why do we start our time travel from here? And how does one become a politician? How does one decide that it's their responsibility to take the responsibility? I was a lawyer. And this building is the trade house, which at the time was a place where almost the entire Sofia bar was housed. The Palace of Justice was turned into a museum at the time because the communist authorities apparently did not think that such a nice building was needed to serve as a court. The court is not so important. Better to make it a museum. That is why when we made our first claims, one of them was the return of the Palace of Justice to the judicial system. And this act is quite symbolic. Yes, this is one of the things that was commented on in those days before November 10th. But the truth is that, at that time, many of us and I thought that even though a lot of events had already begun that showed that people were fed up, there was still no critical mass that could bring about change. And so we thought that creating a bar association with the printed component would be a good way to continue working on public opinion and to encourage some processes. And this is taking place at the end of the 80s, in 1989? This happened sometime in late October, early November 1989. I think that in early October the idea of a bar association was verbalized for the first time. But on November 13th, when the events were already Todorzhivkov fell on Friday, and on Monday we woke up with a declaration that my late colleague Konstantin Muhovsky and I hung on the front door of the coffee shop in the trading house, the building behind me. It contained a series of requests for legislative and practical changes. The legislation was related to the property of citizens a number of other texts of the penal code and the announcement that we were moving towards the establishment of the Bar Association and the request of the Palace of Justice to be turned into a court again. And how does the political landscape look like in these first days and weeks and months? So, you want to imagine the picture. People gather. 
In the South Park, we gather in groups. On some days, rallies or processions are announced. Someone runs and appears on TV. Something is constantly bubbling and boiling. It is clear that the valve is unlocked and something is happening. But of course, it is not clear exactly what will happen. As we had seen, it had become bad elsewhere, given what had happened in Romania. And people gathered in front of the television, in front of Alexander Nevsky, in front of the parliament. But all of this with a special sense of caution. Don't, don't get into trouble. The truth is, talking about how scary it was when something scary didn't happen to us is a little comical. But the God's honest truth was... Yes, but the expectation and fear has been there. Back then, we said to each other, well, I told my wife that if something happened, the British Embassy is a quick run from our home. You were running there and that's it. So, I say again, I don't want to add heroism to this situation, but the fears, there were tremors. And for this reason, it was a very important day when we were walking, a procession on Vitushka. Usually, we would pass by the American embassy and would shout, America is with us for a while. Shouting past the American embassy meant a step further. After all, we are with the Western world as a whole. We are, if you will, with NATO. Yes. Because America included the idea of NATO. Walking in this direction for the first time, someone shouted, down with the Communist Party. Do you remember exactly when it happened? It's hard for me to tell you a date, but it was during the first days of January. The shouting down with the Communist Party was very important because it showed that what we were doing was beginning to become an anti-communist revolution. After this exclamation, the people were somehow unlocked and you can't imagine how happy they were. And the whole procession started shouting. Well, because that's been publicly legitimized, that's why. Started shouting, down with the Communist Party, which was the proof that what was legitimized was something that already existed in the souls of these people. And the amazing thing was that the same evening, an hour or an hour and a half after that event, the UDF chairman, Zhel Yuzhelev, and the UDF spokesman, Georgi Spasov, appeared on television to announce that the UDF was distancing itself from the shouting of down with the Communist Party. Needless to say, I was furious. I just sat down and wrote this declaration, I do not distance, which, thank God, was fully accepted by my party members. It was read the next day on television. And accordingly, the next day in South Park, where our members were gathering, it suddenly turned out that the crowd had become very large because everyone wanted to come to those who said that they did not distance themselves from the statement. They don't distance themselves. In a way, Bulgaria is often framed as the country in which a so-called palace revolution has taken place. I don't think you have to pay attention. Yes, of course it was a palace revolution. There's nothing surprising in the fact that in Bulgaria, these things started with a palace revolution. It had become so because it had already become clear that it was needed. It was needed in the general context of Eastern Europe. The fall of the Berlin Wall the day before and the existing let's call it simmering, let it not be a very wild protest by the nation, but these things are felt. I want to emphasize again, shouting is not the only form of expression. Those who expect to only see a scream will probably not see it very easily. But there are many ways in which such a public simmering is felt. And the fact that the situation was boiling could be understood. Yeah, 
Now, whether a month earlier or a month later, or three months, as I imagined at the time, we were already a little behind countries like Hungary and Poland. But before that, each of these countries had paid a rather high price. Hungary with its revolution of 1956, the Czech Republic with the Prague Spring, Solidarity in Poland. And it is usually forgotten that in Bulgaria there was also a movement against the communist regime, quite severely crushed. Right at the beginning of the communist rule. Back in the 50s, the Goryani resistance movement was around 1952. Is Bulgaria now a normal European country? Yes. Bulgaria has become a normal country insofar as normalcy is not universal happiness or complete satisfaction. It's good to keep in mind that democracy does not create utopian universal joy. After all, a society in which everyone wins the competition in which they appear is not possible. This world is built on the fact that there is competition in it. Not everyone can win in this race. I passed by here every day because I lived on Rokovsky Street and on Dukov Boulevard. My office was in the trade house. That was my natural daily journey. I passed the American Embassy every day. It was all a showcase of things about America, about space, how big a city was, and so on. And from time to time, a remark from a politician or some other information. Periodically, when the authorities decided that something had crossed the line, fences were placed here. Just in case. Yes. And do you remember who shouted down with the Communist Party? Oh, no. But that cry would be heard anyways. Whether it would be cried out today by one or tomorrow by another is perhaps not the most important thing. I mean, kudos to the one who did it first, of course. But the important thing was to clear the focus. Make it clear that this is the position that suits people who walk the squares and streets. It's important to keep these things in mind, because years later, bad jokes happen. I had some special experience in Bulgaria when I tried to explain, in the first days of the changes, that we have to make our way through the desert. And this work will not happen in one fell swoop. Then amazed people came up and accused me of a Moses complex. Others shouted, he wants to lead us 40 years in the desert, what does he think? But in the end, the reality is this, the voices of realism are seldom greeted with applause. <laughs>